Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Rage Richter, Bleeding Throat! Give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! Thank you so much, sir, for joining. My name is BG. This is my co host, yeah. Michaela. Uh, we appreciate you spending some time with us, dude. Uh, if somehow somebody has never heard of you before, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Plug and promote anything and everything. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm Brandon Richter and I live in uh, Orange County, California. And I've played in quite a few bands uh, over the years. Like, uh, I've been bleeding through now playing guitar. But um, the beginning of my career was through drumming. Um, I was emotionless for a while. I've been in Falling in Reverse for a little while. Uh, I was in a Skylight Drive near the end. And I did like a lot of different industrial bands as well, like uh, Cyclone 9, Dawn of Ashes, uh, Imperative Reaction, and The Witch Was Right as well, to name a few. And yeah, so just a musician, I guess you could say. I would say I so am. for sure. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Would you say you're you're more talented at drums or guitar? And do you have a preference? Like if Bleeding Through all of a sudden was just like, would you be willing to switch to drums? Would you say no? Would you stay on guitar? Like, what do you prefer? Um, well, I do. I love both, and it's kind of funny because I mean, I I play more guitar at home than I do drums just because like the noise level and stuff and it's easy to play and just plug in and you know what I mean but I like them both for different reasons and yeah I mean if I ever needed to jump to drums or jump to guitar for the right circumstance in the same band like that wouldn't be a problem oh yeah but yeah it's kind of trippy not too many people do that in in the music biz or in the scene you know where they're just like kind of playing both instruments or more than one in different bands and stuff so where where did all your musical talent come from did when you were young did did mom and dad take you to to music lessons did you just happen to pick up the sticks and and just jam like what is your farthest back memory of music being a big influence to you so i got it from my parents both my parents are very uh, very musically talented um, my dad is an amazing guitar player and my mom is a really great singer. And then on my mom's side, um, everyone in the family is like a singer or a bass player or my, my grandma's a crazy piano player, keyboard player. So I kind of got this like double dose from both parents and, and they used to play in church growing up. So I kind of grew up in the church with them playing in the band every weekend. So like we would have rehearsals at our house in the garage. So I was like always in the music. And then, so I just kind of like stepped up to the kid or like played some guitar when I was really young and uh, never took a lesson in my life for either. Wow. So it kind of just, yeah, kind of just happened, man. I don't know. <laughs> like thinking about it, it's pretty crazy how it kind of happened. quickly and they started playing metal at like really young age so uh, 12 out of like, four bands so I'll start to feel like beats. Yeah. for sure your audio is kind of going a little bit in and out on me but um sorry I probably uh, covered it but yeah like I said I just started like playing real heavy stuff around the age of 12 like double bass blast beats and stuff so I um, just got into that whole world at a very, very, very young age, and it just like took off from there, pretty much. Before I before I miss this question, chat wants to know if uh, any of your previous projects were to come back, would you be willing to to restart that, or is that something you're not interested in at the moment? Um, I mean, I would. I, there's no bad blood with any with any other bands that I've been in ever. And to this day, I still get 
you know, certain offers for, for bands that I've already played with. Once you're in the scene and you're known as a musician, you've done so much already, you kind of get hit up every now and then to be like, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do this? And now in my life where I'm at, I'm a lot more selective. But if someone were to be like, like one of the bigger bands, be like, hey, we need you again for this or whatever. I Um, you said you got into like the heavier stuff when you were younger. Like, what were some of those bands that got you into the heavier stuff? I was just curious. Like, what what kicked off like the metal spark for you? Yeah, it's a good so I was like really into poppy punk around like fifth grade, beginning of sixth grade, and then I was playing in a band at that time. And then I think the biggest heavy bands that like really changed my mind were. Poison the Well and Cradle of Filth when I was really young. And Bleeding Through, believe it or not, um, was one of them as well. I saw them when I was like 11 or something like that in Corona with my best friend at the time. And uh, that kind of like, that was like a real hardcore show. It was, it was Bleeding Through, Avenged Sevenfold co-headliner at Showcase Theater in California like 2002 or 2001 and that was crazy I was like oh my god this is nuts just like to see the scene of what it was here in Orange County even though I was like a little ass kid uh, with who I was already as a person you know I've always loved music I've always loved you know the aesthetic of certain darker things so like seeing that just I was already hooked and then from then on I was like you know, wearing eyeliner and painting my nails. And like, I just dove right into the full hardcore scene when I was really, really young. And then from there, kind of went into death metal and more heavy stuff for a while. But like, I've always been like a hardcore kid at heart, you know, my whole life almost. I want to do a, a couple of fun questions. How does, I, I have a lot of ink and I know you're, kept, you're heavily inked up. How did the inner palm feel right here? I heard that one's pretty, pretty gnarly. Yes, that's the worst one that I have. Those are the most. Those are the most painful. Yeah, and it's funny because they're actually bleeding through lyrics from "Love Lost in a Hail of Gunfire." Um, so yeah, people ask me all the time because I mean, yeah. Oops, sorry. Hold on one second. There we go. I mean, I'm I'm pretty much covered head to toe, like you said. But being like this. People always like, well, what's the one that hurts the most? I'm sure you get you get it too with your throat getting done and everything else. But yeah, the palms, I always say the palms are the worst by far. Yeah. It was torture. It was really bad. Did, were really you, shitty. <laughs> <laughs> were you able to bring a bottle of hot sauce? Yes. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I wasn't sure what the hot sauce. Okay, thing so I'll, was all I'll explain. About. I'll explain. So we do we do some trivia, but you you get to pick the trivia. Uh, what movie or TV show have you seen so much where if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped? If you do get stumped, I ask that you take a swig of hot sauce as far as like a little bit of a torture, and then we keep asking questions while your mouth's on fire. Um, if if I'm not able to stump you, I'll do the hot sauce. And uh, it's just kind of a little fun gag we do. But uh, what would you say, movie or TV show wise, you've seen so many times? Uh, probably the movie that's on in the background right now, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. That one in particular? I am. Yeah, I've, I've seen all of them quite a bit. I mean, I'm a Lord of the Rings junkie, so I, I have it on as like background noise and background music. And whatever all the time so that that would probably be it i don't watch too much tv um so i wouldn't know what tv show unless it was like we'll some go. old school Lord of the something. rings Lord of the rings works we'll take it uh while i look up some trivia on that yeah. michaela go ahead and shoot off another question and i'll be ready for the trivia in a second when touring do you find that doing a tour as a guitarist or a drummer takes more of a toll on you and like what certain aspects oh drummer for sure for sure right <laughs> the most toll for many reasons 
depending on the tour, I mean, I've done a lot of tours where I don't do anything as far as like setting up drums is concerned or tearing down, but right. I've done a lot of tours where I did have to set up a huge ass drum set and play an hour or less and tear down and load in. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Just night, in, night in and night out. That's it's brutal. Yeah. And till 22, when I, I guess you could say I became a professional, mm-hmm. was loading up my drums myself and playing and then loading down. With guitar, like later in my career as a guitarist now, it's mm-hmm. it's way, way easier. Because, I, you know, everything's DI, everything's small, compact, so it's like... Yeah, you just got everything ready to go. Up, you know, and then Derek, the drummer for Bleeding Through, is loading in all this shit, and I'm like, I know that life, man. <laughs> you just look at him you're like i'm sorry bro <laughs> oh yeah one step above the singer has nothing to do so he just walks around every <laughs> single exactly <laughs> well let's see how many times you have seen lord of the rings here we go oh, i start off with what i think is an easy one and if you get the easy one a couple of minutes later i'll give you what i think is a really hard one but this kind of judges how much you've seen where is Boromir from in the Fellowship of the Ring? Boromir is from, uh, shit, let's see, you put me on the spot. <laughs> they are from, uh, there's Gondor and there's Gondor. I think it's Gondor, right? That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah. That is correct. I was hoping you'd say that because I heard you mention it. He carries the horn of Gondor with him. I have to do the hot sauce. I have some Death Valley ghost pepper. And it's gonna suck. I know that's not your thing. Don't worry about it. I'll handle that. As someone that's... How about a, now I'm suffering. As someone that's uh, accomplished so much, you're you're what thirty three, I believe. I'm thirty three. I just turned thirty three. Happy belated birthday! Uh, as someone that's accomplished so much, though, what what goals do you set for yourself every year? Like, do you when January's around, do you go, okay, this year I'd like to accomplish these things, and if so, what are those things? You know, believe it or not, I don't set any goals like that. Um, I think the fire started when I was like really young. I just knew I wanted to just be a musician in some way, shape, or form. Um, and somehow, some way, it just happened. I mean, I worked hard for it. I dedicated my life to it. But as far like I really, because with music, you you can't really go to like school, which you can, but you can't be like I want to go to school to play drums for like a band in the scene or something. You know what I mean? It mm. just kind of happens. How and why I got so lucky to be able to play with so many, I don't, I, I have no idea. You just must be a cool ass it, human, it, dude. I'm just a kick ass dude. Yeah. And it gets along with just, everybody. Just think, he sees it, your opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. You just <laughs> starting young, starting young, and being known as that, as a musician, is, is what it was, I think. Everyone has. But no gold. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I was just saying no. I don't set any specific goals, really. Gotcha. Everyone has a worst show ever. Can you tell us about the worst live gig you ever played? Everything went wrong at this gig. Oh, man, there's a lot of those. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the worst. The worst one. Honestly, there's, there's too many to... to recall but i can give you like an idea of what a worst show is like sure and what it feels like usually it's it's something because being a drummer you know you have click tracks or whatever so the whole show is kind of revolved around you and your timing and i think the worst thing that's happened to me multiple times and a lot of bigger bands is either my drum tech fucks up and doesn't turn on my tracks and click so like the, the tracks are sending out to the crowd. A lot of people are there. But I have nothing in my ears, so it's just like flying blind. 
and people can tell something's fucked up. The tracks are off. This happens. We sometimes you have to stop. But sometimes when you try to keep going and act like nothing's wrong is like the problem and just feeling uncomfortable and feeling like the whole show is getting fucked up because there's an error in that sort of way. It's kind of what makes the show shitty, not just for me, but for the whole band because they're relying on me or our text to make it happen. But unfortunately, in this in this business, that's what happens a lot. There's always technical shit going on. I think the first show of Warp Tour that we did with Falling, it was so hot that the computer just crashed. So we're about to go, and the computer just crashed. So we stopped for like five minutes while they tried to cool it off or fix it, and we're just staring at the crowd. You know, Ronnie's like, sorry, guys, just wait, type thing. But once it gets back going, you know, it almost brings like a new element of fucking go. I'm kind of mad now, so let's make it more intense. But that's <laughs> that's kind of like oh, so I haven't been booed too much or like flipped off a lot. I have a couple times in my day. Maybe I was wearing too much makeup or something, and there's just weirdos in the crowd who just don't like that or whatever. But <laughs> there's been a lot of shows, and not all of them are great. Sometimes you're like, that was fucking shit. And then other times you're like, that's amazing. That's just kind of the way it goes, you know? What? I w- I'm sorry, because I would yeah. ask. I would ask the opposite of that. What was what has been like your favorite moment so far throughout your career? Like one show that really stuck out to you? Like, wow, that crowd was like lit that night. And I had a lot of those too, but honestly, oh, yeah. uh, being, I mean, Warp Tour with Falling in Reverse was really great because it was the last Warp Tour ever and we played the main stage, almost headlined the whole tour. So, I mean, I can't take credit for that band, but to be able to play in it with people being so responsive to the music was phenomenal every single night. Um, playing and bleeding through, playing the songs that I've loved since you know middle school and stuff. Being in the forefront, not being in the back, hiding behind the drum set is really special every time too. Because bleeding through is a very high energy band, you know. So absolutely, there's a lot of, a lot of band going on, and I think just bleeding through and and honestly even with motionless or even a skylet there's been so many good shows i'm trying to think of one that's like really like wow 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 i think orange county with bleeding through was one of those like crazy wow moments um it was with hey breed bleeding through this last it was only like a few months ago and sold out times like 400 or something like that or 400 extra after being sold out Orange yes. County, I mean, wow. it, was, it was great, great. I felt good mentally on stage too. You know, I wasn't too adrenaline out or anything, so I was able to really be there. So that that's probably one of the best ones. For sure. What what it's mistake? Well, bad. well, what what mistake do you see most local bands make? Uh, I'm sure you have a lot of like local openers when you guys tour the, some of the smaller acts and stuff. Do you do you commonly see any of those bands make a mistake, or are you ever able to chat with them backstage before you play and just give them advice? It... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because local bands, from what I've seen over the years, seem to have more ego than the actual big bands do, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, I think that's a big move on their part is not being more humble and more uh, accommodating for whose show it is and maybe um, being more curious and, and absorb everything that's going on rather than maybe wanting it their way and make, making it their show. Um, but not all bands are like that, you know, but as a local band, and like I said, from the time I was 10 till I was 22, I was a local band artist, you know, I, I, I hadn't done anything yet. So, but I always just went there and tried to play my best and I went home. So but just chill out on the vibe of things, you know, and be nice to everyone. That's, that's a very important part yeah. of it, you know? 
That is, I could not agree more with that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. We've got time for a couple more questions each. Uh, Michaela, what, what would be another question that you have? Um, what you were talking about earlier, like about the adrenaline too, you said like you can usually handle it, but like for those times when you're like jacked up on stage, cause I know even like local musicians go through this where like the nerves are going right before a show. Like what are some tips or tricks you do to like kind of calm your nerves before you're, cause you're, you're playing for much bigger crowds, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, funny because, I mean, I've always been a pretty anxious per uh, person my whole life, so I do have Same. a lot of adrenaline adrenaline going through me at all times. Mm -hmm. And you know, being a guitarist now, it's way different. You're in the forefront, and I'm I'm not behind a kit going off, so it's kind of different. It's it's comfortable now, but getting started with it, it was it was different, you know, because when you're in the back behind a drum set. That was like my comfort zone for my whole life. But now, you know, it's a little bit different. Um, there's nothing <laughs> I can personally really do to like calm down, except for maybe like, you know, I'll jump up and down with my other guitarist, John, who's in Bleeding Through too. We'll jump around and we'll just kind of like fuck around or tell some jokes or something and just kind of like move our bodies a bit. But sometimes, I mean, I've been on stage full blown anxiety attack you know what i mean like for sure just from living the life of being on the road i'm tired plus the hormones are raging you know and i'm my body's all out of whack but you go up there you do your best you breathe as much as you can yes you just, Usa. <laughs> Usa. <laughs> you do the best job what like it's just one show and every musician has this a lot of musicians that i've played with personally high stress, high anxiety minds. I don't know if it's because we're creative or musicians or whatever, but it's just the way it is. You know, you still go out there. No one knows. You know, you just do the best that you can do. And after a while, it kind of, you get off stage, it comes down. You're like, oh, I'm fine. I'm good, you know. But there has definitely, definitely. been times where I was freaking out on stage just for different reasons. <laughs> when you're when you're not uh, working on music at any sort of way what what are just some fun hobbies that you do um well a lot of people don't don't know this but you know i'm i'm a musician but i'm a normal person as well so i have a normal at home job uh, at a restaurant that i've been helping manage for almost seven years now um and that allows me to you know be brandon the manager you know, who runs things and I love the restaurant business. So even though it's another job of mine, it is like a hobby because it's just so fun for me. Um, hobbies, I'm a huge reptile person as well. So I love snakes, lizards. I've kept all kinds of boas and ball pythons and monitor lizards since I was a child. Um, I'm into stones, I'm into rocks, so I have a lot of different amethyst crystals all over my house, and, you know, I love art, obviously, I got all kinds of crazy, like, satanic dark art all over the house, and, um, that, that's, that's mainly it, you know, I'm a pretty, pretty mellow, mellow person, honestly, I keep pretty to myself and my little circle, like, my, my girlfriend, and we're having a kid soon so congratulations yeah. congratulations that's awesome that's kind of like my new you know and being a dad and being a good partner and you know working out at the gym i don't know if that's a hobby or not but i sure. i've always been that well so that's mainly what can we expect new music from when can we expect new music from bleeding through that's a good question. We actually just finished up uh, a brand new single. Um, and it's Excellent. the first track that kind of has all of us, the new lineup on it, which the only new people is myself and John, the other guitar player. Um, excuse me. So we all put our spin on this track. So like I'm doing solos on it where I'm singing on it because I do sing a lot and bleeding through. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's getting mixed 
I don't remember who exactly is doing it, but I know he's done some bigger artists and he's thick at what he does. So my guess is definitely within the next few months that single should be out. Hell yeah. 100%. And it's it's a song too. Like we're all really, really stoked about it and really proud of it. And um, it's definitely bleeding through, but we add our flair to it, you know, our melodic guitars and we add some flair, but it's definitely bleeding 100%. Hell yeah, awesome. Well, Brandon, we appreciate your time, yeah. man. This is a lot of fun. Uh, you're you're a kick-ass, cool dude, and you've you've been in half of my, like all of my favorite bands, literally at one point or another. And you're you're just an amazing musician, yeah. very very talented. We we appreciate it. We look forward to the bleeding through single that you're talking about in the next couple of months. And uh, please don't be a stranger. We we'd like you back on another time, maybe uh, seven or eight months down the road. We can just check in and see how you've been. And uh, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure. Cool. Congratulations again on being a, a dad here soon. That's awesome. And uh, enjoy the rest Thank of your day, you. sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Rage Richter! Yeah, hell yeah.